Somebody else is camcorded, you still filming. You see anything interesting? There's birds there, look. Nothing particularly interesting, though. They're just ducks. <laughs> well, and Dan, tell us what you've seen. Um, oh, I've seen, um, I've seen um, lots of um, usually bars mysteriously disappear during the night. Um, I've seen uh, uh, lots of people get very cold. Yeah. Um, I saw Teddy Zombies yesterday morning. I saw Teddy Zombies yesterday. What about UFOs? What about UFOs? Oh, could have been what looked like a white ball of light on Monday. Go straight over our heads. And uh, Wednesday, what looked like um, two balls of light flying out the top of uh, Westwoods. Excellent. It was quite exciting. <laughs> really. <laughs> Yeah. Great. Let's we'll keep us going. This? The um Mexican lady. Yeah. Not coming. Uh, well, she's been taken away by this uh, champion that came up. Just the, the In favour of going to his parents for yeah. dinner or something like that, you know. Mm -hmm. Which could happen any other night of the week. Yeah. Can we sit by Dan and I'll break some of this gear then and I'll film you. Posterity. Well, how right was you yesterday? Nah, no, shut up. I mean, it's a poor dog. What? Sawyer. No, 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 it's a little black one. No, no, it was Sawyer. Oh, no, it wasn't that puppy. It was, um, it was Sawyer, actually. But, um, I, I think I'll it's... I'll break some of this gear, instead of sort of rolling joints and sort of things like that. Just a nozzle. Oh, hang on. I've got I evidence now. You ever pissed me off, this tape has been released. Sawyer did. Call Virginia. Let's go. Aye, aye. We know the truth. You know, I mean, even if they've got friends, she will be careful. She's like, just don't tug his Cool. Yeah. And she didn't pull out him. She wouldn't pull out him. She'd stroke him. Yeah. So she wasn't bothered. She, she sort of, you know, she'd try and just sort of keep your hands out of the shot. She wouldn't pull out him. I'm sure. I'm not going to do that. This night stays clear. Why would you do that? It was just a bit of a short time. Oh, yeah. To pick up some dashery friend. To have a look at some dashery friend. I've already seen a rabbit. That will be interesting, actually. Mm -hmm. but, uh, I guess until midday we'll be here. And then mm -hmm. cameras. Shot of you in there. They're recovering a UFO that crashed up there the other night. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> oh, Get him. Hang on, Lord. aren't they tractors yeah, with um with they could hay be. on the I back? Can't, I can't see. It just looks khaki in colour from here. Can you get anything on that then? No, it's not. Can you do, have a look through those binoculars? It might be just farm vehicles. No, that. It's actually just in front of the... I can't see it with the naked eye. I can see it through that. And it was at the back of the crop circle before, and there were two up on the other where side are they, of the Where is it now? Oops, sorry. Have we got the other thing focused on there, boy? Shh, sorry, sorry. I saw it a bit of freak, did I? can't see anything. Let me have a look on the screen. Tell me where it is on the screen. I can't see anything here. Well, uh, this last week of surveillance has been quite interesting um, since it's in, in the most part revealed the weaknesses of this kind of uh, surveillance and really I think uh, number one, the surveillance instead of being for seven days needs to be for at least three months. It also needs to be a unit that's mobile and without any question we need to be looking at wavelengths that are outside the visible wavelengths, i.e. infrared without any question. Along that we need, alongside that, we need also, I think, a considerable amount of uh, audio monitoring as well, various, uh, various frequencies.
with audio. So I think the, this is very limited in its uh, scope, and I think uh, next year it's uh, very probable we can beef it up uh, a great deal. So what sort of you know interesting things have you seen so far? There must have been some sort of unusual things filmed in the night sky. Yeah, the the sky is full of um, lights that appear in a very curious way. Um, very often they're explainable very easily because they're uh, aircraft, they're military operations, headlights, everything looks very strange depending on the atmospheric conditions. But it's a matter of uh, really sifting through all those. We've got a number of um, sightings of lights that weren't, for example, weren't visible by the naked eye, but we could see them very clearly on the cameras. Now, we're going to have to look at those very carefully, I think, and, and try to assess what that phenomenon is and why it's happening in that way, why we can't actually see the lights. And yet, uh, on the cameras, the cameras seem to be picking it up. It's, um, there's certainly enough. There have been so many reports of uh, sightings of uh, glowing lights or balls of light that I think it's, uh, and also the, the fact that they're so closely connected with uh, also the military activity around here, I think it means it's certainly an indication that there is something that needs to be pursued, an investigation really needs to be take, undertaken that's really far more comprehensive than uh, the operation we've been working on here. It's really far, far too limited. It's been very interesting, but it's actually actually exposed, you know, where we need to be looking. It's shown us really where the best, uh, where the, what kind of operation needs to be employed, I think, to get any further with this. If I was to say to you that it seemed like over the, a couple of nights of interesting activity, that it seemed to be as people, people's excitement and people's attitudes seemed to be sort of more open, that there were more things happening, would that mean anything to you? Would that statement mean anything? Uh, well, certainly I think there has been a long period of sustained uh, reports in this area. And without any question, people who are interested in this kind of thing or have seen things elsewhere are coming here. Well, there is a, a sense that there are people here with far more uh, perhaps curious minds or open minds about this sort of phenomena. I, my, my, I'm, my stance is really um, trying to look at what an exploration perhaps with uh, clairvoyance and meditation might reveal, uh, but also um, I'm straddling an area into a much more rigorous uh, scientific approach, I think. I think we need to somehow bridge those two positions because clearly what is manifesting itself is not just in the visual spectrum. I think it's, and it's not just manifest in this uh, physical world, I think it, well, we're perhaps dealing with something that might well be crossing both those worlds. You know, the real world and the world of really uh, perhaps another level or parallel, another a level of uh, existence that really doesn't cross over to this realm of four, uh, four dimensions very readily, but seems to from time to time. No, they're doing the meditation down there. Yeah, well, I'm going to have to leave this playing until that light goes off. OK. It's on record. Wow, well, that was quite interesting. Food break. Danny, there was a light in the middle of that crop circle. Yeah, they're, they're doing the meditation yeah, down there. saying there's no light down there. What? The uh, artifact there. Um, my missus has sent them on their way. Oh, right. Mm, well, it seems quite nice. She said there was a family in the big barrow. And, you know, there's a little barrow at the side here. Um, yeah, what, like the dip? Yeah, and then there's another little hut. Yeah, so it's between the older and the big one. Is it? There's an old wise woman in there. Oh. Far more powerful than all the occupants of the other one. Yeah. yeah. That's oh. why she was put there. Paul? Oh. Sorry, do you mind? Don't. Uh... Oh, you can see the lights in the middle of the crop circle.
to allow an extraterrestrial, um, and it's beyond our reality. Um, and I think that the more people that get involved in looking into this, the more evidence that will be gathered. So, yeah, I, I'm 100% for the subject of crop circles. Mr. Sawyer. This is the level of mentality of sky watchers <laughs> on professional patrol. <laughs> stop filming me. Stop shooting me! Yeah, stop it. Stop this filming. Stop, stop! How, how do you expect to see anything if we're filming each other? I know, you've done well there, haven't you? See why it could have been pixels before, because when I saw something earlier on, there was um, some white flashes, and it could have been pixelation in the camera lens, but if... <laughs> I don't think so because the um, I'm looking at it now and there's absolutely no flashes big like enough to suggest what I saw in the pixels. Do you think it's possible it's happening in the infrared spectrum? Possible um, because it was quite I don't know it was quite a, a heat intensive white light so yes possibly. Okay. Uh, sort of camera camera setup to well, um, well the hell. We were basically hoping to capture either light ball activity or something to satisfy the Japanese public's general curiosity as to uh, why and how and where these phenomena occur, particularly in conjunction with crop circles. And do you think you've been successful in what you've uh, what you've attempted to do? Um, we've got one or two things on film that don't quite add up, um, but we, ha we certainly haven't got anything definitive, as it were. Uh, however, you know, when we go through the footage, I'm sure more things will appear that uh, defy explanation, as these things tend to when you're not actually there and there's no one to prod, prod you and go, no, you remember, that was a headlight. <coughs> Does this leave you positive about uh, doing a, a future project of a similar nature, maybe on a bigger scale? I think, yeah, I, th I think what we'd like to do in future is, is a similar kind of thing. But rather than being rooted to, to a spot like this, it would be nice to actually be mobile, um, to have spotted out, to have a mobile unit and a kind of a base camp somewhere, uh, such that the base camp wasn't the main unit, in order that we could get around and get to where it's happening when it's happening, rather than sitting on the hill and hoping it happens in front of us. Have you, have you been quite excited at some points? What was your feeling when you thought you were seeing some things on the screen? Um, being a very, very, very sceptical, kind of hard-to-please person, I've been fairly, you know, fairly reserved about everything we've seen so far. Really, has to be said. Good, OK. But that doesn't mean I don't believe there is more. OK, and um, well, I'm just going to think. Personally, I mean, I'm inclined to think that the way to, to really further this kind of research has more to do with uh, bringing in, you know, more and more and more and more and different types of clairvoyance uh, and seeing what people are picking up with extended human perception rather than technically. Because I think technically you, you, you're limited to, to very, very objective kind of things and... All that stuff's been captured yeah. in many ways already. Well, I remember last Everybody's last done year, their research, yeah. everybody's measured their circles, and, you know, analysed the, the crop. That's all been done. If you want to move it all on, you've got to start looking for other explanations. All the, all the kind of spade work stuff's already been done by people, I think. So you're into the idea of objective research with... Uh, in conjunction with... Clairvoyance. More esoteric research. Yeah. yeah. So what would you say? Um, clairvoyance not in contact with each other and seeing whether they get the same results. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, well, thanks very much. You're welcome, Matthew. Good luck. Thanks.
Yes, it, it's all waiting for you. I Yo! Think. Most of the crew got abducted out an hour ago. All the crew got abducted. Yeah, that's what it's no joke. Yeah, yeah. The director seems to want. I can just about see A.P. De Sorensen here. Ah, I can just about see Matthew, but I can sure enough see his tally light. Yeah, <laughs> silhouetted in the moon. Yeah. So if I turn this way, I might even see him. Nah, it's too dark. Have you been doing some sky watching up here the last couple of nights? No, I haven't. I'm sorry to say. Oh. I don't know nothing about nothing. All I know right. nothing, nothing. <laughs> No, just uh, my la the last night that they're doing it here, I thought, God, I gotta see something up here because this is the the most uh, in intensive sky watch that's been for several years. I think since um, White Crow, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, it's the best, uh, most important one in years. So I didn't want to miss it all. That's why I'm here now, and we're just hanging on. Waiting for the meditation going to be down at the bottom of the hill in a short while, <laughs> in the crop circle down there. Okay. And maybe that'll bring something exciting. Yep. Right. Until then. Good night. Good night. What happens if I put the laser beam in your camera? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you could try it. It won't hurt it, I'm sure. No. Okay. Well, you there can you see it really bright. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's a UFO. Look. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Looks good, I
about that because it's fully confirmed now that we are, there is a higher power or higher intelligence that you're monitoring on. Well, um, that, that has... That fucking Adele Stevens in that Sunday sport there, she's fucking gorgeous. Oh, that's a butcher. The blonde, the one on the front show in the ass. Yeah, it's true, Seekers. Oh, fucking hell, here we go. We are not here, and this is a hoax. This is not us. We are not <laughs> fucking here.